We're out here at OSU's Range Cow Research Center with Dave Lawman, our Extension Beef Cattle Specialist, where a unique study is going on regarding beef cows and milk production. And the team, of course, is working behind us. Give us an overview of what this study is all about. Okay. Producers don't have the opportunity to measure milk production. And so that's part of our job as scientists is to maybe kind of fine tune on production practices uh, where producers can't. And so this is a fairly typical set of Angus and Angus crossbred beef cows. And so we, we're going to try to milk them about every 28 days through the summer and then perhaps even several years in a row to see what level of milk they give, how it changes with different forage quality, and how it changes with different um, energy availability if we were to provide that for them in the in the dry lot. In the, in the dry lot because we can control the amount of energy they get. The bottom line is, Lyndall, we're, we're going to see uh, if changes in energy availability improve their efficiency of milk production. So we hear a lot about efficiency. That's the reason you want to study this in the first place? Yes. Yeah, that, I mean, if it's, it's, it's interesting that uh, about 30 years ago, as near as we can tell, the average milk yield in, a, in the beef cattle industry was somewhere around 12 to 15 pounds. We milk 55 cows here Wednesday morning, and the average yield on this set of cows was 30 pounds. And these cows, I think, as I mentioned, would pretty well represent an industry average. So we had a kind of interesting, we had a low milk yield of 17 and a high of 53. So a lot of variation in those 55 cows. And their milk output, how did it relate to the size of the cow? It did not. So we looked at that just, just yesterday after we got the data kind of summarized <clears throat> and just did a regression with cow weight and there was, there was no relationship. It'll be interesting to see over time if that continues to be the case. The little cows give about as much milk on average as the big cows. So these cows that are producing more milk, what are their nutrition needs? How does that translate to what goes on at feeding time? That's, that's a good question. Um, the more milk a cow produces, the higher her energy and protein requirements are. I mean, it takes energy and protein to produce milk. It's also interesting that her maintenance requirements are higher, just like a Holstein cow's maintenance requirements are higher. And, th and that's a requirement that's within 365 days a year, whether they're producing milk or not. So it's important. In fact, it's been estimated that about 70% of the energy used to produce one pound of beef is used by the cow, the beef cow, okay? So that includes feedlot phase, stalker phase, and everything. And so uh, the cow's nutrient requirements are really important piece of the overall beef production efficiency picture. So if I have a high producing cow in my herd, does that translate naturally into a higher weight for the calf at weaning time? Not necessarily, and that's one of the concerns and, and another good reason for projects like this. As far as we can tell, um, over the last 20 years or so, average weaning weights across the industry have stopped increasing, okay, in commercial operations. Uh, probably they are still increasing somewhat in purebred operations, but in commercial operations where you have generally have lower inputs, um, they have stopped increasing. So, on the other hand, the genetic trend for milk production, genetic potential for milk in the cattle industry, beef cattle industry, continues to increase. So, so the, what that tells us is that we, what we may be doing is, well, we may be creating a factory that is more expensive to operate but not producing any more widgets. So the takeaway in terms of sustainability, what's the message there for producers? The message is, and it's a difficult thing for them to figure out exactly how much genetic potential for milk they need, it's, it's kind of a challenge, but the message is, is that extremes in that trait, uh, it's particularly from a nutritional standpoint, are probably not a good idea. And, and on, 
from the industry average standpoint, we're probably about maxed out as far as what our forage resources can handle. Okay, Dave Lawman, thanks a lot. Thanks for having us out here to you and the team for showing us your research and explaining what it's all, all about. And of course, keep us posted on how it all turns out. Will be.